Matt does fitness issues this challenge. Lift Thor's hammer, win a thousand pounds. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I know a guy. That's what we call smashing your workout. And so when it comes to resistance training to improve your musculature, your bones, your joints, you have the core principles of work hard, basically consistently, and you have loads of different options in which to implement that. We can think of the base layer principle of progressive overload as guiding your training, making it challenging. This can be done in many ways, for example, by increasing the weight, by increasing the repetitions, by decreasing rest periods between sets, changing the tempo of lifts. You can use many methods within one session, performing major movements, for example, pushing, pulling, rotation, squatting, lunging, etc working muscles from different angles to do this you can use different equipment such as kettlebells dumbbells machines barbells bands suspension trainer also your body weight you can use advanced training methods such as drop sets or supersets or pyramid sets now these are not better than traditional sets per se they're just a different option they're another tool in your toolbox and after all don't forget that change equals adaptation you can use different variations of the same exercise to change the strength curve of the exercise you may for example use chains to create linear mass displacements and you can use periodization to ensure this continual planned challenge to change up your workouts over periods of weeks months and years unless you're in space in which case you're Six months in space leads to a decade's worth of long-term bone loss. During space missions lasting six months or longer, astronauts can experience bone loss equivalent to two decades of aging. He's got nothing to complain about, got the whole gym to himself, which leads me to saying thank you so much for watching the last video. I'm truly humbled, the discussion, the jokes, all the interaction. And to the person who commented the cardio with no hands paid off, I laughed. I tried to pin it, but the combination of googly eyes and sausage fingers meant I deleted it. I apologize. He slaps your girl's butt. What are you doing? Getting on the cardio machine would be safe there. Actually, I'm just trying to get huge. So Craig Glass just wants to get huge. He self-proclaims himself as a mass monster. Do you even lift, bro? Yes, he does. Had a slip last post, guys. I apologize. Here are some amazing transformations that were done all natural. Yes, all natural. If you're looking for a change, please message me now. Custom diet, training program, etc. Talk to clients daily. DM me to get started. A legitimate business with a fitness influencer, unless you're doing it like this. Three months. I'm not gonna analyze any more glute pump. Six months, are we talking dog years? Craig, we all want to be healthier, but it's biologically impossible for that guy to go from pick one to pick two in six months. I'm a huge fan of yours, but please be realistic with before and after photos. Unless you're being a little facetious here, then rock on. He's not being facetious, he's being a fitness influencer. And Craig, this bloke's journey from 300 to 185 to 300 and lean, Ain't natty, is it? Olympia champion Hadi Chupan has had a falling out with his coach who's made shocking revelations against elite Olympia bodybuilding champion Hadi. Hadi was called Mr. Synthol and Synthol People's Champion by his ex-coach and brother. So it wasn't just the amino acid supplements then. So I thought that was just established that pro bodybuilders use a little Synthol as seasoning for their salad. Or is Synthol now considered cheating in elite male bodybuilding? Because if it is, that would be hilarious considering the fact of how many pharmaceuticals they have to use to be competitive at that level but what is cheating is swallowing Ronaldo's ab stimulator oh dear so this is going around the web right now and they were disqualified did they think no one would notice Camelita two and a half million worshippers she does crypto NFT and CrossFit Bang Energy Athlete, obviously. She's voluntarily posting to the Insta. And with two and a half million followers, let's just say she ain't on minimum wage. But yes, I do feel suitably awkward. Seeing my gains. Guys, once again, I highly recommend my pre-workout from Bang Energy. I've been mentioning it for years and I keep having confidence that it's the most powerful in the market. I don't think those gains are from Bang Master Blaster, Camelita. Sorry, they clearly are. This is not fitness. This is not health. This should not be rewarded with millions of followers or sponsorships. And let's not pretend that this is in the fitness genre. This is like a mukbang being considered a fine dining tutorial. But I guess she is sponsored by a suitably stupid energy drink brand. There is someone for everyone and all that. And in this case, that someone's this guy. And talking of stupid energy drinks, we now have a new pre-workout formula of that cat piss known as Zoa Energy. Someone's had a few too many, me thinks. And so I like The Rock. I like his easy to watch feel good films in the evening when my brain has turned into mush. But Zoa Energy is an inferior product with incorrect marketing claims as I have shown before. But what about the new pre-workout version? Label me. And so I've been through ingredients like this many times on the channel, so I don't want to repeat myself. So I'll speed run this, but please watch my older energy drink videos, pre-workout videos, if you want more in-depth science. So essentially you start 
start with a vitamin stack at the beginning at 100%, you know, that's fine. It's not the crazy 500% we see. But again, what I'll state, and importantly, get your vitamins from food, not from energy drinks. And then you have the electrolytes, potassium and sodium. It has a far better dose of sodium, which is the key electrolyte, than Prime Energy has, which is meant to be a hydration drink. But let's get to the real stuff, the pre-workout. What is giving you these supercharged workouts, the focus, etc.? So L-citrulline, a valid ingredient. It aids in nitric oxide synthesis, which simply means, you know, more efficient blood flow. It is underdosed. For an effective evidence-based range, you'll be looking for six to 8,000 milligrams. Betaine, again, a valid ingredient, which of course regulates water balance in cells. It's linked to hydration. It's also linked to power in cycling, but we don't have a strong evidence base for that. 1,250 milligrams, unfortunately, again, it's underdosed. And so in the context of a pre-workout supplement, you'd want two and a half thousand to 6,000 milligrams. And so I want to stop here because some people may say, well, you know, take two or three cans a day then to get to effective uh, ranges. But that would mean you're drinking two or three cans of energy drink a day. And also this is marketed as a pre-workout, which would mean you take it pre-workout, which would mean one can. You would be far better just taking a good powder than downing two or three energy drink cans pre-workout. Derek's pre-workout is well thought of, Noel Day's has a, a decent pre-workout on the market. By the way, if your fridge looks like that, you ain't doing it right. L-carnitine, L-tartrate, simply not strongly evidence-based for purpose. I've bashed on that repeatedly on this channel before. And then a blend, so we don't know the exact amount. So, but green tea extract, when combined with caffeine, can form quite a strong stimulant effect but you've got to give the amounts in this blend so people can know if it's in the effective ranges. And then you have the cognitive ingredient Ginkgo, which is underdosed again. That is about half the dose that you would want. And the Gaiasa leaf, which has many properties being antioxidant, I'm not overly versed in that. So let's just for argument's sake, assume that that is well done. So again, for me, this is just a bang average product, in no way a great pre-workout formula and in no way matching the hype of their marketing. It has just a few valid pre-workout ingredients such as L-citrulline, betaine, and then caffeine. Caffeine is the only one dosed correctly. I like the dose of caffeine they give. It is ergogenic, that part of it is good, but that's essentially all this is. It's probably a nice tasting flavored caffeine drink. It is in no way some type of superior blend of energy drink and pre-workout. And so I YouTubed it to see if others had reviewed this. And Derek has an interesting take on it, and this is important for balance. And essentially what he's saying is that by combining a pre-workout with an energy drink in a can, it's basically not possible to include effective ingredients in effective amounts in terms of suspending them in a can. So essentially the category of energy drink slash pre-workout is a flawed category. Because of the fact that it would be impossible to fit the concentration of ingredients in it that I would want to actually get out of a NO hyperhydrating formula in general. But again, if you want to go down the pre-workout route, then just take a good pre-workout powder. Um, ultimately, the cost effectiveness, the you know lack of efficacious dosing for these ingredients because of an inability to suspend it probably, I'm just not that into it, you know? Like I would use this more of as, as an energy drink than a pre-workout is my suggestion, is kind of my conclusion on the whole thing. And also just to state, there are many effective pre-workout ingredients that are missing from this product that you would have in a good pre-workout supplement. But if you are buying this, be clear that you're buying it because you like the rock, you like the way it tastes, you like the way it looks. You you want a caffeinated drink, not because this is going to give you a pre-workout advantage. Sip yourself. Now let's 